So this is my Dilutions 5x8 journal and I've taken a piece of a 12x12 paper from my stash that I've had for absolutely ages and I thought it was about time to use it up and as I was feeling in that spring kind of mood this was ideal. So I'm going to stick it down with this Ranger collage glue stick. This is the triangle one that allows you to get right into the corners. And I'm just going to stick this piece of paper down right the way across the double page spread, making sure that it fits evenly into the crease. And I'm just going to use a bone folder there just to make sure that there are no bumps or creases or wrinkles in the paper because I did kind of want it fairly smooth. And I'll repeat the same process for this side. Okay, we're all nicely stuck down, so it's time to move on to the next step. So this is white gesso from Indigo Blue, which they call Gesso Good. And I'm just going to use my finger and just dab paint around the edges, just to soften that line between the edge of the paper that I've stuck down and the actual pages of the book. So it doesn't eliminate it completely, and that's not what I was going for. Just wanted to soften the color um, around the edges to create a kind of um, more subtle border than what it looks like without. And as with most processes you will see me put the paint on, take some away, put some back on again, maybe take it away again. It's a process of just keep on applying and then taking away until you're happy with the way it looks. And being the tidy boy that I am, I'm just going to get rid of that gesso off my fingers before moving on to the next colour. And I'm using the baby wipe just to blend that colour on the page a little bit more. So now I'm going to introduce some more pastel tones to the page. This is the Pink Ice Gem Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue. And again, I'm just going to do the similar sort of thing that I did with the white gesso with the pink around the edges of the page. I'm not going to go all the way around. I'm just going to thinly apply a coat in certain areas. Um, I'm not can't remember actually whether I did end, up going, end, did end up going all the way around or not, but I don't think I did. I'm now happy with that paint, so I'm just going to clean my finger again. I'm bringing my heat tool just to dry off that pink paint before moving on to adding on uh, a third colour. And that third colour is the Townhouse Teal acrylic paint, again from Indigo Blue. This is a real nice sort of turquoisey, kind of eau de nil, um, pastel kind of colour that I also wanted to introduce to the page as well. So I've got some kind of shabby cheeky colours going on here. So, And again I'm just going to apply these with my finger and I will bring in a wet wipe so I can move some of the paint around just kind of blend it a little bit because I don't really want too many harsh lines or edges where that paint is. I want it to kind of look blended and subtle uh, and almost faded away. So you saw me add some more of that pink ice gem and now I'm bringing back the white gesso and I'm just going to add some of that white gesso just to tone those colours down a little bit. I did feel that like they were a little bit too strong for what I was going for so bringing that gesso back in and just lightly applying some in certain areas just kind of breaks up that block colour and makes it look a little bit more distressed, a little bit more old fashioned.
And once again, once I'm happy with the level of paint and the blending on the page, I'm just going to bring the heat gun out and just give it a blast before I move on to my next stage. For the next stage, I want to add a little bit more interest into the background. So I'm going to bring out the alphabet border stencil from Dilutions. And again, using the townhouse teal and a foam blender, I'm just going to take some of the color from the lid and just apply that through the stencil around the page, just to break up some of those larger areas and to add a little bit more interest and a bit more dimension and some layer uh, into the background of the page. Once again, out comes the heat gun just to give that a dry before bringing out another colour and another stencil. So I'm bringing back out the pink ice gem and this time I'm using the brickwork stencil from TCW. And I'm going to do the same thing just to lightly add some of that paint through the stencil just to add a kind of really subtle brick effect into the background. happy I'm just going to bring up that heat gun just give it a seal give it a heat just to dry everything before bringing out that white gesso again for the final layer so for the final layer I've added some white gesso into the lid and I'm using a sponge dauber and the art is stencil from TCW and I'm just going to put that white gesso through the stencil and this gives me a nice kind of subtle script effect into the background especially when you use the white because it's not doesn't stand out as much it blends more into the background more like camouflage So this is a die cut that was sent to me in some happy mail by Linda Bell. Thank you, Linda. And I'm just going to cut it in half. I'm going to use both halves of the, the die cut. I'm just going to apply some of the glue from that Ranger collage glue stick um, onto the backs. And then I'm going to stick those down onto my pages. But I want to get rid of that glue off my mat first because I don't want that sticking all to the back of my book. So I'll just give it a quick clean up, a bit of a dry. There we go and then I can bring the book back in without fear of getting glue all over the cover. So I'm just going to take the two halves of that die cut and place them up to the edges of my pages. And as you can see, the pale pastel blue of that die cut really does complement the page. So I've had a look in my stash and I've pulled out some other die cut pieces that I've had lingering in there for quite some time and some backing papers that I've not used. So I've cut some elements out of those just to collage onto the page. So I'm only going to stick them down using the triangle collage glue stick. I'm not going to bring any matte medium in or anything like that for this page. I'm literally just going to stick everything down with the collage glue stick.
So that's all my collage elements stuck down. I'm now going to bring out the white gesso again and once again using my finger I'm just going to lightly apply some of that gesso over those collage items and those die cuts just to kind of tone them into the page just to um, kind of make them blend a little bit more and to make them um, more look like the more inclusive into the page rather than just stuck on which they are. So if you apply some of that paint across your die cuts then it does integrate them more into the overall picture rather than making them look like they stand out too much. I'm not being very eloquent today am I? I'm often asked you know why we put gesso on a page and then we wipe it straight off again well it's all a question of balance because you might add some gesso on, like you see me adding it over the roses here and then you might look back at it and think actually there's a little bit too much there and just remove it and you can do that with gesso on a baby wipe it gives you a lot of control so now time to add my quote I'd originally printed it out on my computer with a bluish background but didn't like it so I did it again just on the plain white one and all I'm going to do is just stick my quote blocks down with a permanent tape runner and that will do the trick. I'm not going to go over later with any matte medium or anything because it doesn't really need it. It's exactly the same as if I'd stuck it down with that collage glue stick because this is a permanent one so it ain't going to go anywhere. So the quote I'm using is a paraphrased quote that I found on Pinterest and it reads the bird song might be pretty but it's not for you they sing and if you think my winter's cold you don't deserve my spring and that, that really does kind of fit my mood at the moment I'm fed up with cold and wintry days and I just want spring to hurry up and get here. So now my quote's stuck down, it's time to add a little bit more of a border around the edges of the page and for that I'm using this Potting Soil Archival Ink from Ranger and I'm just using an ink blending tool to add some darker colour around the borders and to bring that colour a little bit further into the page just to kind of antique it or kind of distress it, maybe give it a bit of weathering and then I think I'm just about done. So that's it for the border so I'm just going to find a black pen because I want to outline the quote blocks and I'm using this Stabilo write for all permanent black pen it's not the world's best pen for writing over paint and that kind of thing but it does have a fine point and that's what I wanted in this case the food ball pen would have been a little bit too dark and a little bit too wide a point for what I wanted it for so I'm just going to add some very subtle um, black borders around those word blocks for a little bit of decoration and then at the end I will switch back to my food ball to date and sign the page. As I'm watching myself put these borders around the blocks I'm thinking to myself do you know this doesn't look like it's speeded up at all so I've just had to double check and it is it's actually speeded up to two and a half times its normal speed so I must have done this pretty slowly because this looks just like I'm doing it in real time. Okay, I'm now happy with that, so there's only one or two final things left to do. I'm going to bring out the black gesso again. I'm just going to add a little bit, or not again, black gesso for the first time. This is the same as the white, 
same company indigo blue but i'm just putting a tiny tiny little bit on my craft mat mixing that with a little bit of water and then using my fan paintbrush i'm just going to mix that together and add some black splatters to the page now i think that's all that was missing from this page it's surprising how just adding in that little bit of darkness just bring the page together so i'm just going to bring the heat gun in and just give those splatters a real good dry and then i'm going to drag out my food ball pen and just sign and date that in the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to call this page done and dusted. So that's just about it from me for this week. If you have enjoyed the video and the creation of the page, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now, and I will see you all again in a few days.